Chapter Two of Just So Stories. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Tim Bulkley of BigBible.org. Just So Stories by Rudyard Kipling. How the Camel Got His Hump. Now, this is the next tale, and it tells how the camel got his big hump. In the beginning of years, when the world was so new and all, and the animals were just beginning to work for man, there was a camel, and he lived in the middle of a howling desert, because he did not want to work, and besides he was a howler himself. So he ate sticks and thorns and tamarisks and milkweed and prickles. Most excruciating idol! And when anybody spoke to him, he said, Humph! Just humph! And no more! Presently the horse came to him on Monday morning, with a saddle on his back and a bit in his mouth, and said, Oh, camel! Oh, camel! Come out and trot like the rest of us. Humph! said the camel, and the horse went away and told the man. Presently the dog came to him with a stick in his mouth, and said, Camel! Oh, camel! Come and fetch and carry like the rest of us. Humph! said the camel and the dog went away and told the man. Presently the ox came to him, with the yoke on his neck, and said, Camel, O oh camel, come and plough like the rest of us. Humph! said the camel, and the ox went away and told the man. At the end of the day the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together, and said, Three, O oh three, I'm very sorry for you, with the world so new and all, but that Humph thing in the desert can't work, or he would have been here by now. So I'm going to leave him alone, and you must work double time to make up for it. That made the three very angry, with the world so new and all. And they held a palava and an indaba and a punchayet and a powwow on the edge of the desert, and the camel came chewing on milkweed, most excruciating idol, and laughed at them. Then he said, Humph! and went away again. Presently there came along the djinn in charge of all deserts, rolling in a cloud of dust. A djinn's always travel that way because it is magic. And he stopped to palava and powwow with the three. Djinn of all deserts, said the horse, is it right for anyone to be idle with the world so new and all? Certainly not, said the djinn. Well, said the horse, there's a thing in the middle of your howling desert, and he's a howler himself, with a long neck and long legs, and he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. He won't trot. Phew, said the djinn, whistling, that's my camel, for all the gold in Arabia. What does he say about it? He says, humph, said the dog, and he won't fetch and carry. Does he say anything else? Only humph, and he won't plough, said the ox. Very good, said the djinn. I'll humph him, if you will kindly wait a minute. The djinn rolled himself up in his dust cloak, and took a bearing across the desert, and found the camel most excruciatingly idle, looking at his own reflection in a pool of water. My long and bubbling friend, said the djinn, what's this I hear of your doing no work? with the world so new and all. Humph! said the camel. The djinn sat down, with his chin in his hand, and began to think a great magic, while the camel looked at his own reflection in the pool of water. You've given the three extra work since Monday morning, all on account of your excruciating idleness, said the djinn, and went on thinking magics with his chin in his hand. Humph! said the camel. I shouldn't say that again if I were you, said the djinn. You might say it once too often. Bubbles, I want you to work. And the camel said, Humph, again. But no sooner had he said it than he saw his back, that he was so proud of, puffing up and puffing up into a great big lolloping humph. Do you see that? said the djinn. That's your very own humph that you brought upon your very own self by not working, 
Today is Thursday, and you've done no work since Monday when the work began. Now you are going to work. How can I? said the camel, with this hump on my back. That's made a purpose, said the jinn. All because you missed those three days. You will be able to work now for three days without eating, because you can live on your humph. And don't you ever say I never did anything for you. Come out of the desert, and go to the three, and behave. Humph yourself. And the camel humphed himself, humph and all, and went away to join the three. And from that day to this, the camel always wears a humph. Well, we call it a hump now, not to hurt his feelings. But he has never yet caught up with the three days that he missed at the beginning of the world, and he has never yet learnt how to behave. The camel's hump is an ugly lump, which well you may see at the zoo, but uglier yet is the hump we get from having too little to do. Kiddies and grown-ups too, woo-woo. If we haven't enough to do, woo, we get the hump, the camellius hump, the hump that is black and blue. We climb at a bed with a frowsly head and a snarly, yarly voice. We shiver and scowl and we grunt and we growl at our bath and our boots and our toys. And there ought to be a corner for me, and I know there is one for you, when we get the hump, the camellius hump, the hump that is black and blue. The cure for this ill is not to sit still, or froust with a book by the fire, but to take a large hoe and a shovel also, and dig till you gently perspire. Then you will find that the sun and the wind, and the gin of the garden too, have lifted the hump, the horrible hump, the hump that is black and blue. I get it as well as you, woo. If I haven't enough to do, woo, we all get the hump, the camellius hump. Kiddies and grown-ups too. Descriptions of the pictures by the author. One. This is the picture of the jinn making the beginnings of the magic that brought the hump to the camel. First he drew a line in the air with his finger, and it became solid, and then he made a cloud, and then he made an egg. You can see them both at the bottom of the picture. And then there was a magic pumpkin that turned into a big white flame. Then the jinn took his magic fan, and fanned that flame, till the flame turned into a magic by itself. It was a good magic, and a very kind magic, really, though it had to give the camel a humph, because the camel was lazy. The jinn in charge of all deserts was one of the nicest of the jinns, so he would never do anything really unkind. 2. Here is the picture of the jinn in charge of all deserts, guiding the magic with his magic fan. Camel is eating a twig of acacia, and he has just finished saying humph once too often. The jinn told him he would, and so the humph is coming. The long towely thing growing out of the thing like an onion is the magic, and you can see the hump on its shoulder. The hump fits on the flat part of the camel's back. The camel is too busy looking at his own beautiful self in the pool of water to know what is going to happen to him. Underneath the truly picture is a picture of the world so new and all. There are two smoky volcanoes in it, some other mountains and some stones and a lake, and a black island and a twisty river and lots of other things, as well as a Noah's Ark. I couldn't draw all the deserts that the jinn was in charge of, so I only drew one. But it is a most deserty desert. End of How the Camel Got His Hump Recording by Tim Bulkley of BigBible.org